shortcut is Command uh, Option uh, H. And what Command Option H is going to do is it's going to hide all of the windows except for the window that you're cur or all the applications except for the application that you're currently in. So if you guys like myself find yourself in you know 15 or 20 different applications and your screen is extremely cluttered, then what you can do is you can basically hit Command Option H and you can you can just have the one application you're working in and then everything else goes away. And then you can call up the other applications using something that I'm just about to talk to you uh, talk to you about called Quicksilver. So, any questions on expose or spaces or keyboard shortcuts so far? And can you guys see my video right now as well? Or are you only able to see my computer screen? You can see both me and the computer screen. Oh, I love this. This is awesome. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go on to the next slide, which is Quicksilver. This is one of my favorite, absolute favorite things in the entire world. And what Quicksilver is, is it's an application launcher. So it's, uh, that's one of the things that is. It's actually a lot more than that, but um, most people think of it as an application launcher. And so essentially what it allows you to do is it allows you to bring up applications very quickly. Um, so rather than having to go into your dock or, you know, into your, you know, forbid applications folder to actually find applications. This allows you to bring up your apps um, really fast. And the way that Quicksilver works is that you can conf you configure a Quicksilver trigger of sorts. So um, the tr trigger for me right now is command space. And sorry about that, Quincy. I know we're pushing a lot of stuff here with the screen sharing and the and the uh, and the video. So um, I'll minimize my video a little bit too and see if that helps you out at all. So with Quicksilver, what I've configured is I've configured the command key and the space key to pull up my Quicksilver app. And essentially what this does is it brings me into a thing, and I've got something running on Quicksilver called Cube, so it might look a little bit different. There's a bevel and, and one, a couple other interfaces. But basically what I can do is I can start typing in an application right now, like let's say for instance I can start typing in um, you know, Firefox, and if I just type in F, Boom, it brings me up to Firefox, and now all I need to do is hit enter, and Firefox will go ahead and launch. So it's a really slick way to navigate through applications. The other thing that I love about Quicksilver is it actually learns from what you end up doing more frequently. So, um, you know, you notice under F, there's a lot of different things that I have here. You know, I have Firefox, and Finder, and Fluid, and Flash, and Flickr, and blah, 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 blah. What um, Quicksilver is going to do is it's going to see what are the applications that I use most frequently and it's going to weight them higher. So over time what happens is, is the applications that I'm using a lot show up first in lists. It's very easy to use. So I can use this quickly to get into, you know, Mailplane, which is my mail app. Just type in MA, it brings that up. I can use this quickly to get into, um, you know, all the different Fluid applications that I've got set up, which we'll talk about here in a, in a second. Um, you know, I can use this to get into System Preferences very quickly. Um, very, very easy. So Quicksilver is is one of those things where once you start using it, you can't imagine going you know back to you know hunting for an application any other way. So um, here's the link to the website where you can download Quicksilver. Um, to be completely honest with you guys, I could do an entire class in Quicksilver. There's so many complexities and so many different things that you can learn. The two things that I would recommend to do are first to go, um, and there's a three or four articles on the Lifehacker website about Quicksilver. So if you just go out and you Google um, Life Hacker and Quicksilver and just you know, read a few of those articles. They do a really good job of summarizing what's out there. Um, and then the other thing that I would recommend is go out to YouTube and search for Quicksilver tutorial. And you'll find you know, five, you know, ten really good tutorials on Quicksilver. Um, Quincy asked what the specs of my, my Mac were. Um, pull those up real quick here. So those are a couple of, of things that I think are, are um, good to check out um, if you want to learn more about Quicksilver. So the other thing about Quicksilver is, is you can set up triggers in Quicksilver. And what this is is basically just custom keyboard shortcuts that allow you to do certain things. So for instance, if I want to launch uh, an application, um, let's see, let me think. I'll, I'll launch Campfire right now, which is our, our chat application. For me, it's, it's Control, Option, Command, and then I believe it's F will launch that application for me. So 
that'll bring up um, our, the chat application that we use for, for EduFire. So, um, you know, for me, that's another easy way. And it's, it's fairly easy just to go in and be able to go, you know, um, uh, option, spacebar, and then start typing in, you know, campfire. I can do that. But um, for me, I've also found the triggers are nice to set up. You can also use the triggers for specific things within applications. Like, for instance, I've got mine set up so that when I do control, option, command, space, it'll pause or unpause iTunes. So if I'm listening to stuff in iTunes and I want to quickly pause or unpause, I can just hit control, options, um, control, option, command, space, easy for me to say, and then that'll pause and unpause iTunes. Uh, yes, Quicksilver can definitely open files. Um, the way that it works within the file system is you can hit, um, you know, you can start typing in the name of a folder and like for instance here I start typing in iTunes and I can go into iTunes Music and then I can go over and I can find files within iTunes that way. So it's actually a, a fairly easy way to get to files. Um, you know, I don't, you know, I don't end up going into files a lot repetitively. So I know there are some some hacks to get into files even more quickly with Quicksilver. Haven't really played around with them too much, but um, you know, you can definitely use it to get to files. So it's a lot easier than trying to you know hunt within your file system. Spotlight's another good thing. I'm not going to cover Spotlight today, but Spotlight's the search capability, which is also, um, and Quicksilver has a search capability as well, and there's a lot of debate between people as to whether or not the Quicksilver search is better than the Spotlight search. So, so again, I could spend more time there, but uh, we've got a lot of other stuff to cover, so I'm going to move on to FluidApp. So what FluidApp is, is FluidApp is the uh, uh, application that allows you to create what are known as site-specific browsers. Um, there's a lot of things nowadays on the web, a lot of web applications that people use, and the problem is, is that if you're in, you know, 10 different web applications, that means having 10 different tabs open in Firefox or, you know, having multiple browser, window op browser windows open, and it's a little bit hard to navigate and a little bit clunky. And so FluidApp actually really helps quite a bit with this, and, and, I, and I think, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think FluidApp might be only on Leopard. So if you're running, you know, Tiger or an older operating system on the Mac, you may not have the ability. I don't know if anyone can, can confirm or, or that or for me or not, but um, I'm pretty sure it's only on Leopard. But FluidApp is, is pretty slick. Um, so you saw what I did before with Campfire, which is our chat application. So what I've done is, is I've set up in FluidApp a specific instance of, um, of Campfire to run as an, an SSB or a site-specific browser. And what it's basically doing is, is it's launching SSB. Um, it's a launching this then in its own window. So I can bring this up and I can go into um, Campfire and I can use this basically as a separate window, not sitting within my main, you know, Firefox or my main Safari windows. And it makes it really easy for me to switch back and forth between web applications. So, you know, an example would be is if I want to pull up um, Gmail, which I've got configured as a site specific um, browser. I can just hit my Quicksilver trigger, start typing in Gmail. And you know, boom! It's going to bring up for me a site-specific instance of Gmail. So, um, fairly, fairly slick. So let me pull up the link here for Fluid App. Fluid App's very easy to use. Um, it's something that you know will take you just a few minutes to configure your applications as Fluid Apps. And once you configure them as Fluid Apps, it's, it works really, really well. So, I um, definitely recommend that you check that out. I'm going to get one more link here for you. Um, the other thing that I've noticed is, is, is by default, Fluid App grabs the, the favicon.ico um, image to use as the image within, within Fluid App. Um, the, the thing about that is that that's um, usually typically not a very good looking image. So a bunch of people have actually created on Flickr, there's a pool of applications that you can use um, so you can find our pool of images that you can use for your application. So for instance, you saw like what I had with Campfire, the image there is, is uh, you know, a pretty neat looking image. It didn't look like that before. And uh, that's just a way to make your uh, system a little more visually appealing. So any questions on, on Fluid App that you guys have? Does it make sense, kind of, what you would use Fluid App for? The notion of